Hi everyone, welcome to my first podcast. Um, I guess I'll just introduce myself. My name is Antonia. Um, I'm 24 and I live in Vancouver, BC. And I just wanted to make this kind of vlog or podcast thing because um, I'm a really big fan of logging all of my projects and stuff that I do myself on paper. I have like the classic project journal where I keep little scraps from everything I've done. And I just thought it would kind of be fun to keep track of everything also in like a video format where I can show all the stuff I've been working on. Another thing that inspired me to do this as well was I recently had PRK laser eye surgery so that I could get my vision corrected and something that really kept me sane during the first few days where you are not really allowed to go on your computer or see any light at all is I was able to just put on other people's knitting podcasts and it was really fun to hear about all the projects that they were doing and it would kind of inspire me even though I wasn't able to see the video part of what they were posting. Um, I found that everyone is really good at describing the projects they're working on and the texture of their yarns and you know the fabrics that they're making with their different stitches so I found that it was really immersive and gave me something to imagine even when I couldn't see what was going on so I figured I liked listening to them so much I might as well kind of start one up for myself. I'm not sure how often I'll be uploading things because I don't think I can turn out as many projects as some of the other people that I watch do. I feel like a lot of people can easily say that they finished their sweaters and stuff within a couple weeks or one or two weeks even. So I don't know if I can be that productive but I do have projects ongoing all the time so periodic updates are always kind of fun. Um, I guess I'll start with what I'm wearing today. Um, this is my cami number five I believe from uh, My Favorite Things Knitwear classic pattern. I knitted this up in the Knitting for Olive merino in uh, slate gray and I do really like this piece a lot. I find that the merino is really good even for like tank tops or summery spring kind of wear but the kind of construction of the neckline of it I do wish that it just kind of was out a little bit so if I could do any changes for it I would probably modify that. Obviously that's in the very beginning so I'm not going to undo this and do it all over again um, but yeah I can't really update my whips that are now finished objects because I've never mentioned them before but I do have one really big finished object that I'm super proud of finally conquering which is my Agneet cardigan. So I started this beast back in June I believe which I thought at the time was crazy that I was knitting this huge mohair -y, fluffy brio stitch thing in the middle of summer and it was so hot when I would knit it on my lap and stuff but it is finally done I'll put some better pictures in there somewhere but I am so happy with this and I got these lovely kind of shell buttons gifted to me and I think that they're the perfect touch of like kind of fancy or kind of it adds some kind of sparkle and it's not just a basic kind of plastic tortoise shell thing that you'll find at Michael's. I did try to go to Michael's in the search of buttons and they had absolutely nothing. I don't know if it's just Michael's Canada is having a crisis at the location that I go to but there was I think one single button in stock like one single card that held one single button and there was nothing I could do about that so Super glad to have these kind of deluxe looking shell. I don't know if they're like oyster shell or I don't know, abalone buttons, but I was really happy with that. I made this up using um, Tin Pure Gint and the Tin Silk Mohair by Sandis Garn. I'm pretty sure that that was one of the recommended yarns or like the substitute yarn. There's no way that I'm going to be able to make anything out of the Izzier yarn that it was intended to be made out of, I think. I made mine in a, I think a medium, and I wanted kind of like an oversized look. I know that brioche stitch kind of blooms anyway once you block it and everything, but I had had a couple of projects recently where I told myself that I would just knit like a small or an extra small and that it would block out, don't worry I'll just stretch it and it'll block out. 
and then it doesn't fit exactly the way that I wanted to afterwards even with all the blocking so I figured might as well even though it's definitely a slog to make a bigger size so many more stitches especially with the brioche growing so slowly but I'm really glad I did it in the end I've been wearing it pretty much every single day since I finished it but I wanted to wear something different for the video so that I could get maybe one more project in there to show everyone. I found that even though I just finished it so it's not like super long-term wear results, um, the Pure Gint and Mohair blend that I've been using for it really it's been good with the pilling and everything. It, it looks like the day that I finished it pretty much which is lovely because I've had a couple other sweaters that I made last year that I loved and still do but it sucks to get pills and some my the sweater shaver that I have does a decent job at removing them but some of them when it gets really bad even I think I need like an industrial strength one or something because there's no way that some of those pills are getting off with the tiny one that I got at Daiso so I'm really glad that the Pure Gint doesn't seem to be pilling as much obviously it's better that I have the mohair in that one too so it's extra resilient to that kind of stuff and that wear and tear but yeah it was my first time using Pure Gint or the Tin Pure Gint and I wanted to do like the Celeste sweater hopefully soon I'm not sure if I'm gonna be getting Pure Gint for that one I'm, I'm since there's so many colors involved with it I'm definitely having kind of a crisis with all of the different combinations you can do for the yoke and the different colorways and if I want to do something more bold because you'll see that everything I make is pretty much lots of grays and browns and beiges and I kind of want to do something a little bit different but it's it's hard to make those kinds of commitments when it comes to buying a huge quantity of yarn um, but yeah and also the Pierre Gant I found has just gotten even softer since I first finished it it already wasn't really irritating to my skin once I had just finished it but even more that I've worn it for a couple weeks now like continuously I can wear it completely next to skin I can wear a tank top underneath my arms don't get irritated um, it do obviously doesn't have a high neck but my neck or the back where the back of the yoke is doesn't irritate me at all either so I've been loving that with the fabric since that's such a huge project that's honestly my main finished object that I have to share because it's the only thing that I've been working on for a very long time um, so I guess I can just get into some of the whips that I have going right now and I do have quite a lot of whips to share because obviously I've started a lot of these at various times and they're still ongoing so this is kind of the episode of a million whips I'm even gonna leave some out because some of them are so embarrassingly hibernating that I don't even think they're worth mentioning right now and then one actual main finished object so lovely to get that one out of the way I guess I'll start my first whip with a small object so these are my um, mountain walk socks that I'm making from uh, Handmade by Florence's pattern um, I've made a couple kind of like preference modification things I did add a bit of a twisted rib cuff to it just because I kind of like that stuff and I kind of plan on making another pair of these sometime and this was just kind of my bleh whatever yarn that I was honestly just going to make a vanilla sock out of these um, but then I started knitting it up and kind of liked the colorway it looks kind of awkward on camera but um this is the Patton's Croy socks in the clover colors I believe yeah clover colors um, shade I thought that it was gonna be so I have an issue with always buying Croy socks because whenever I go into a Michaels it's kind of just such a nice little impulse buy where they always have a coupon to use for like a single purchase so I can be like oh I'll just buy like one single skein of Croy FX or Croy socks FX or something or the base colors and and then it's kind of like a low commitment I can just make in this into whatever sock I want at some unknown time so I have these other vanilla socks that I made with a different Croy sock colorway and I thought that this one was gonna end up being a lot more like striped like this one was and I do like these socks and I wear them a lot just because they're really hardy and super warm but 
I, these kinds of like very stripy socks are not really my vibe or my style to wear a ton. They're great inside like my docks, my boots somehow still haven't chewn through, chewed, oh my god, they still haven't chewed through the heels or anything, which I found was always an issue with my just non-hand knit regular socks, like the heel would always be the first thing to go. So I like this yarn because it's fun impulse buy. It's like picking up a little sweet treat, except it's yarn and it's at Michael's and it's like 30% off all the time. Um, but yeah, anyway, this is all to say that I, in terms of its actual properties, I'm not even sure how much I like this yarn because I found that they're always quite scratchy when I first finished them. But they do, after wearing them a bunch, they do kind of wear in and get a lot softer after that. I don't think that this is super wash. I don't want to risk it, so I always hand wash them anyway. But that kind of sucks for socks to have to, you can't just chuck them in the washer. I know that this pattern was definitely not the best idea. I mean, it, it looks okay. It looks ridiculously skinny. Um, I just finished like the heel. Uh, I tried it on my foot, so I'm for sure able to get this over my heel, which I was the main concern for me. Um, but I know that this kind of like speckled weirdness kind of yarn is usually not the best for cables or lace or that kind of stuff. Uh, so I figured that this would be just kind of like a chill. And it, it's easy to do these kind of like mock cables, so it's not that much of a loss, I figured, if you can't really make out the pattern that much because it wasn't too much effort to actually make them. Um, and because it's not only variegated within the whole sock, there's also a lot of, whoa, there's also a lot of actual speckling that goes on between it. And I think it's kind of fun though. As far as the actual colorways go, I like the name Mountain Walk Sock. I feel like this kind of greeny, foresty, burgundy and blue and green kind of look is totally what I imagine if someone told me they're making a mountain walk sock. So I'm super excited to have these in my collection and I'm definitely going to wear them to death once I'm done. Yeah, love that. To switch it up from the Michaels oriented yarn, uh, my next whip is going to be my cami, my cami number nine which is a little bit of a tragic story right now because here's how she looks, um, this kind of color. I don't know exactly what this color is actually. Um, oh, it's just 13. Okay, well anyway, maybe the color being 13 was an omen of bad luck because I got this yarn at one of my local yarn stores and it was on sale. It wasn't discounted a huge amount, but I thought, oh, it's that's so cool. I've never knit anything with something like this. Obviously, this cami that I'm wearing now, this is the first tank top that I've ever made, and I made it out of wool, so I thought it would be fun to try something that was like a vegan plant-based fiber kind of blend. So this is made with, um, I think it's 51% lyocell and 49% cotton. So I thought it would be, usually I don't really like the feeling of cotton tank tops and stuff. I feel like it's just in the summer, it's not, I'd, I'd rather have wool honestly at that point than cotton for like a knitted tank top. But I thought a, a cotton with lyocell blend would be so fun and interesting to try out because I've never tried it. And it was from this cute little Kremka morning salutation vegan wool that or vegan it says sole wool but vegan yarn made of cotton and lyocell that I wanted to try something new and I got enough quantity to actually make it and I was having such a good time on my super teeny needles knitting it until I attached a new skein towards the end and I tried it on and noticed that there's totally Okay, hold up, there is totally, here you can definitely see there is a noticeable change right about there between the two skeins. Maybe that'll kind of be better to show it. 
but um, it's like 4.30 p.m. with the sun setting in my super dimly lit room right now and it's even more noticeable in daylight or under like super harsh lighting. I'm bummed about this because I don't really know what the policy for having this crazy of a difference between the two different skeins is. Maybe I'll attach a picture or something if it's a bit hard to tell on camera how different they are, but especially when you actually see it on and in full on lighting, it's quite noticeable. And at first I thought, oh my god, I'm so stupid. I just didn't check the dye lots when I bought it. You know, first time I've ever forgotten to check maybe. But I checked the dye lots and they're all the same. So I don't know if there was just like one freak ball was different between all the other ones that I got or if something wrong happened with the tagging or labeling when they had dyed them. I don't know if that's really possible or common because the whole reason of tracking the dye lot is so that that kind of stuff doesn't accidentally happen. But I was kind of bummed about that. So right now it's, I'm not sure what I'm going to do about it, but I just put like an invisible string through here and I'm just keeping it in hibernation for now and I'm gonna deal with what to do with it later. It's such a bummer because even though it's cold outside now and it's not really tank top weather, I do really like wearing these to layer under other things because I'm kind of one of those people that's always freezing cold all the time so I'll have a bunch of layers on but it's nice to be able to take the layers off and still have something nice you're wearing underneath to show. So I'm hoping that maybe I can get another ball to add to it or I'm, I'm gonna ask the people at the yarn store and see what they think I should do because I'm kind of sad about it. On to probably my biggest whip of recent history. I've got my Moby sweater here. Um, I've just joined the front and back bits so I'm just knitting all straight down the body right now and it's in this nice kind of dark gray color. I was a bit worried that this would be too dark to have all of this texture going on but Honestly, I think the shade of the gray is not that bad and you can still tell all the details that are going on, especially the cables on each side of the neck. Um, but I also at the same time don't think this was the best yarn choice for this project. This yarn is another child of my Michael's Raving Whims where I just decided to buy a bunch of the Patton's Classic Wool Worsted yarn. I got a sweater quantity because sometimes they have like 30 or 40 percent off all wool or all yarn around the whole store and then at that point I feel like this yarn is pretty good in terms of getting a hundred percent wool I think this is the only 100 percent wool yarn that I can find at Michael's if there are other ones let me know because I think it's kind of fun to go there every once in a while but in terms of the actual properties that I wanted in my yarn for this project, I'm not sure if it was the right choice. Obviously, since it's kind of heathered or speckled or a mix, and it's also not the roundest yarn, so it doesn't really have the best stitch definition and for the actual texture that I'm knitting up. It is a little bit chunkier than the recommended weight, DK weight, for the sweater was supposed to be but I just wanted to kind of have a really big chunky one that was sized up so I'm actually making this in a size medium as well just like I did with my Ignite and this was kind of just a symptom of I went to Michael's and I bought a sweater quantity of this yarn because I figured of course I'll want like a dark gray sweater at some point and then simultaneously I had also pre-bought the Moby sweater pattern and was thinking oh someday I'll make a Moby sweater and I wonder what I'll make it out of and then just at the same time I decided to use this yarn for this project. I think it'll still be really great. I'm looking forward to wearing it because I know that sweaters made of this hold its shape quite well and I'm looking forward to that. But even before finishing this one, I would be definitely not opposed to making another one in the future. Maybe, I'm thinking maybe like a lighter weight and even maybe a creamy or a crew kind of color would be nice to make. I've been always eyeing the, I think, Peggy sweaters at Aritzia whenever I go in and 
it's always when there's sweaters in a regular store I'm like ooh, that's so nice but at the same time I could make something similar to that and it would be super high quality and also have a lot of emotional connection to the stuff that I make so I think making a kind of more lightweight and cream color one for that kind of vibe would be really fun but yeah here's my progress on this one so far and hopefully won't take too long to finish up so after all this slew of Michael's yarn projects that I have going I am happy to have something that's actually a bit nicer than that this is the very very beginning of my um my Sophie scarf that I'm gonna make and I'm making it out of um, Nordic Yarns Eco Cashmere. Unfortunately, I don't know what the name of this color is, but I have it in my online receipt, so I'll put it somewhere. Um, unfortunately, I lost the tag that comes around the yarn, which is a big bummer for me because I really like to save them and keep them in my journal. It's kind of like a, it's a scrapbook for everything I do, but like for my, Cami number five I kept a little strand of the knitting for Olive and even for stuff like for my Agneet I always keep like a little piece of the mohair and the and the wool that I used and a little each of the little labels that comes with it and I rate you know which needles it's like my own old lady ravelry where I just write it all down all the specs the size I did and everything so I really like keeping those and obviously this was a project that I have only one skein to make the whole thing so kind of bummed that I lost that somewhere I don't know why I would have thrown it away but yeah and this is intended to be my put this little thing in my tote bag or my backpack or whatever and then I can do this on the bus without really thinking that much or if I'm waiting for someone in a coffee shop just like a on-the-go kind of project because it's so small and portable but for some reason recently I've just been taking my whole entire Moby sweater with me whenever I go anywhere and I keep it in my bag and just knit on like the train or on the bus with it. So this has been at a really sad pitiful amount of progress for probably like a month or two just because I have had other projects I've been wanting to work on more than this. But I'm very excited for it to be done someday. I made the Sophie shawl last year, um, also out of the <laughs> out of the Patton's classic wool worsted in like a heather brown color. Um, and I do really like the huge chunky scarf kind of look because I get so cold, but I also appreciate the baby scarf kind of idea now and I think it would be really cute to even like tie it up in your hair as kind of like an ear warmer headband kind of thing because then you kind of wouldn't have to wear a hat and you can still stay warm. So yeah, super happy with this project. Maybe I'll actually start carrying it around a little bit more so I can finish it sometime this year. In terms of yarn acquisitions, I can't really go through all the stuff I've acquired since last episode for obvious reasons, but I figured I would share a couple of things that I got recently that I'm really excited to work with. I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do with them yet, but I'm happy to have them in my stash. So both of these things that I got were when I went to Knit City Vancouver, I think it was a couple of months ago now, and these were the two things that I decided to treat myself to because I didn't want to go too crazy. The first is from Sunday Fiber Company, and it's this gorgeous hand-dyed Surrey alpaca and silk. Oh. Surrey alpaca and silk fluffy gorgeous yarn um, called the Nimbus Surrey in the shade Cirrus it appears and yeah it's just so pretty it's a gorgeous kind of dusty gray really light cool gray and don't even come at me with the gray stuff one of my friends has been telling me Antonia you have to stop buying gray yarn because everything you own is going to be gray and you're just going to wear a million different shades of gray but this gray is different and it's so pretty and fun. I'm not 100% sure what I want to make with this yet, but I think that a either a hat or a headband and some matching like fingerless gloves would be really cute. 
This is only a hundred gram skein and I'm not sure how much I would have to use for either of those projects. And I've never worked with this kind of Suri Alpaca lace combo before, so I'm not really sure how far it stretches either in terms of guesstimating and mental math. So I might see if there's any sets online, if there's any patterns, and see if I can make it stretch. It would be lovely to have a hat with the matching gloves, but I'd rather have the matching gloves and a headband if I can make that work with the amount that I have. So yeah, super gorgeous. Beautiful local hand dyed goodness. Love it. The other thing I got at Knit City was this alpaca sock yarn from Kensington Prairie Farm. And it's just so squishy and so cute. Um, I think that this is just a nice two ply sock yarn that I'm not sure which sock pattern I would use to knit this up with. At first I was thinking of doing the mountain walk socks with this, but I'm not sure if the weight is correct, which is kind of why I just decided to make the other one with the Croy sock right now. But I think I could do kind of like a heavier weight sock with these, and I've never made any alpaca socks, so it just feels so soft to the touch already. I'm super excited for the socks that I'll make with these, and hopefully they'll be pretty good wearing and they won't break down too quickly. Since it's such a nice creamy light color, I would like to do some kind of in more intricate sock pattern with it instead of just another vanilla sock. I am thinking maybe like a lace pattern would show up better since there's holes and stuff in that rather than just a cable or something. So I'm not really sure. If you have any sock pattern recommendations for something like this, let me know. Um, but yeah super fun and I'm so I'm I love making socks it's like my de-stressor I don't know why I feel like once you make one single pair of socks you become addicted to knitting handmade socks and then the only socks you wear are handmade socks and then you just can't stop so yeah that's all I have to share for my first knitting podcast if you guys have any questions about the projects that I've been making I'll put them in the description or I'll also update my Ravelry projects for all of them so that you can look up the details of how much I used and what size I made and that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Bye!